we have parked our caravan in a farmer's field near Hopton-on-Sea, Norfolk. An early morning start heading to Norwich. Fisherman's Wharf is shrouded in fog. It does not affect the taste of our coffee and breakfast. We think this is aboard a patrol vessel. In Norwich to see the cathedral, a pretty unassuming entrance. Reveals the cathedral. Covid rules mean there is a one-way journey in place, with no backtracking. Faith, patience and skill produces religious tapestries such as this one. The present throne is modern. It sits over two ancient stones, which are thought to be the remains of the original bishop's throne. Our visit is on the birth date of Gail's late mother, Jill. You can forward names to be read at weekly prayers, and I had sent Jill's name in. I did not know this as we joined the small group for the weekly prayer meeting. Randall let me know to listen for my mother's name at the last minute. If you let the minister know you are present, they pause in the prayers when they get to the name of your person. In this pause, you can light a candle and put it in the memory candle frame, which we did. Always a cat. This one came to Gail at the end of the prayer service. Our one-way trip around the cathedral was resumed. All too soon, we're in the cloisters. Then outside again. Horsehair Loak is only about 45 meters long with old storage buildings. It leads into Ferry Lane, which ends at the river at Pools Ferry House. Heavy rains bring an end to plans to do the riverside walk. Before passing this beautiful old building in lighter rain, heading for a coffee. Drinking coffee does not stop the rain. Decision made to head back to the van. Change your plan. There is no rain at the coast. We are near Caister and park up to walk the beach. A launch trailer for a lifeboat suddenly appears out of the dunes. We have found the Caister lifeboat team on an exercise draw and stopped to watch. First to appear from the sea, the lifeboat's rib, Fred Dibble II. Crewed by three, this 5 meter, 35 knot vessel is limited to just two survivors. It's a small boat, mainly for inshore work. Then the offshore boat, Bernard Matthews II, a Dutch built Valentine class. In service since 2004, 11 meters in length and good for 37 knots. Needing a crew of four to six, it has the ability to carry up to 50 survivors. The rib trailer gets pushed into the sea first.
As the offshore trailer joins the rib trailer in the sea, our view of the rib recovery is cut off. Bernard Matthew will be reversed on, ready for instant launch in response to an emergency call. Both are pushed uphill to the rescue station, where they will be washed before being tucked away in the boathouse. No cafe is here, so we move on to Galston Beach. Lynette, a dear departed friend, we made this visit in your memory. We remember the photo you showed us, you as a five-year-old in 1945 on Galston Promenade, showing the beach and all around, still festooned with barbed wire and anti-tank traps from the war. I proved that I did dip my toes into the freezing North Sea. Fish and chip supper is had indoors, so we can safely ignore the dire warning sun. Ending up back at the van, with rain again, tracing rivers down the top of the awning. 